Hey there, folks. Just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit this morning uh, about the stuff I've been reading about because I've been doing some research uh, so I could write a blog about the illegal immigrants that um, we're detaining and how how this happens basically what's going on is that the Immigrations and Customs Enforcement has been authorized to treat all immigrants as criminals. So when a family arrives at the southern border or the northern border or wherever they arrive at, then they're immediately treated as criminals if they don't present documents showing that they have a right to be there. So once you're treated as a criminal, then it is perfectly legal for law enforcement to take your child away. And that's, that's what we're seeing with these concentration camps of children, um, is that the parents are deemed criminals, and then by deeming the parents criminals, the children get uh, removed from their parents. So after the children are removed from their parents, they're held in these detention facilities, that are basically concentration camps and um, the uh, I've been reading the policy this morning I've been reading the policy about how these children are treated and what what the government is expected to do and what the contractors are expected to do on behalf of the Department of Health and Human Services so initially when the children are taken into custody, it's by Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. And so that's the Department of Homeland Security. So the Department of Homeland Security takes these children in as criminals and then transfers them to the Department of, of uh, Refugee, the Office of Refugee Resettlement. So the Office of Refugee Resettlement then uh, takes the children and tries to place them. And so for 45 days, uh, ideally, they try to place them with family or siblings or um, send them back to their home country. But then what happens is that they get put into foster care. So after 45 days, they get, they get moved to the next step of the process, which is to put them into foster care. So the foster care programs that are approved for handling uh, children of criminal, or how do they call them, uh, unaccompanied minors. The, the unaccompanied minors um, of these criminal immigrants are then put into foster care. And the foster care programs that are approved by the Office of Refugee Resettlement are typically Lutheran or Evangelical. So these religious uh, organizations facilitate the resettlement of these children into foster care homes. Because you can't adopt a refugee you, because they, their status might change and they could end up being given back to their family or sent back to their home country. So instead of adopting them, they get put into foster care. And um, the parents who apply to become foster care uh, providers through these re religious groups oftentimes are abusive to the children. And it didn't take me very much researching to find that uh, the religious background of the evangelicals and uh, Lutherans that are providing these foster care programs they have extreme religious beliefs. So the extreme religious beliefs end up lending the parents authority under God to abuse the children. So then the children end up getting beaten and um, basically what happens is that the, the immigrant children end up being adopted into these extremist religious homes where they're then held to a standard that the children can't attain. A lot of times they don't even speak English. 
So then, once the children are deemed to be troubled children by their foster, their foster home, there's a network of other religious families that the children are then transferred out to. So there's a network of religious groups or religious families that transfer foster children amongst each other. It's, this is really twisted. So once you're a foster parent, it's not necessarily legal, but in some jurisdictions it is, for people to, uh, with just a, uh, notary a notarized letter, transfer custody to another parent. And, and what ends up happening at that point is that the Office of Refugee Resettlement and the Department of Homeland Security and the, you know, whether it's a uh, coalition of Catholic bishops or the, the Lutheran Church, whichever organizing group, they lose track of the children at that point, and the children then get put into this network uh, that's really untraceable. And at that point, who knows where they end up? So. I've been doing some really dark reading, some really dark research. I'm working on a blog piece that I'll be putting out today or tomorrow once I get it all written up and get all my sources uh, and images and everything tied together. But uh, that's what I'm working on and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time to tune in. I hope you have a great rest of your day out there and I will talk with you again very soon.